Hi, today we're going to talk about relative velocity. Really have three goals for today. So first, this is really our first uh, time we're going to start talking about two-dimensional motion. So that's kind of a general goal, and you'll see that theme played out over the next few days. Then we're going to look at relative velocity. And first we'll do it in one dimension, and then we'll look at it in two dimensions. So, relative velocity in one dimension. So here's a typical example. So you know the velocity of Ann with respect to Bill. So we've got VAB. That means velocity of A, Ann, with respect to B, Bill. Ann is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour east. So she might be driving along the Mass Pike. And Bill is... Uh, standing nearby, just watching the cars go by. Now you also happen to know the velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill. And the velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill is 110 kilometers per hour east. So Cindy is probably just in a different car on the Mass Pike, traveling the same direction as Anne, uh, just not quite so fast. So now we want to know what is the velocity of Anne with respect to Cindy. So what we need to do is sort of transform reference frames. Okay, we're really kind of in the Bill reference frame to start with because all our velocities are stated with respect to Bill. And we have to move to the Cindy reference frame. So one way to do that is simply subtract off Cindy's velocity with respect to Bill from every, every other thing in the uh, picture. So if we subtract Cindy's velocity with respect to Bill from Cindy, then she's going to be at rest, because she'll have a net velocity of zero. Okay, so we do that for everybody, and in particular we do it for, uh, for Anne. So we take Anne's velocity with respect to Bill, subtract off Cindy's velocity with respect to Bill, and we'll get Anne's velocity with respect to Cindy. 120 kilometers per hour east is Anne's velocity with respect to, to Bill, subtract off Cindy's velocity with respect to Bill, and we're left with 10 kilometers per hour east. Okay, so according to Cindy, she sees Anne traveling faster to the east than she is, so she's actually, she sees Cindy going uh, 10 kilometers per hour further east than she sees herself. Okay, now in general, we can state, and this is good for more than one dimension in fact, that VAC is VAB plus VBC. Now, this might look like I made a sign error, if you compare it to the previous uh, equation, VAC equals VAB minus VCB. But if you look carefully, you'll notice our first equation has minus VCB, the velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill. The second one has VBC, the velocity of Bill with respect to Cindy. And the velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill is exactly opposite to the velocity of Bill with respect to Cindy. So VBC is the same as negative VCB. Okay, so those two equations, the one in the box and the one on the line just above it, are completely consistent with one another. But if you look at the general equation, you've got velocity of one thing with respect to another thing is velocity of the first thing with respect to some third object plus the velocity of that third object with respect to the second thing. Okay, so you take the two subscripts on the left, the first one is the first one in the first term on the right. The second one on the left is the second subscript in the second term on the right. And then the other two subscripts on the right are just the same thing. Okay? Bill, they're both Bill or they're both Fred or they're both Judy or whatever. Okay. So we're going to go through that all again just in a pictorial method. Okay? So this is the information we've seen on the previous page. I'm doing a little color coding here. So Cindy's going to be blue, Bill's going to be green, and Anne's going to be red. Okay, so here's what things look like from, say, Bill's reference frame. Okay, so Bill maybe is on a bridge overlooking the Mass Pike. Okay, and he's looking down on the Mass Pike, and he sees Anne in red and Cindy in blue traveling past him toward the east. Okay, 
So what we're going to do next is we're going to switch reference frames here. So first we'll switch to, uh, well, let's see what we'll do. We'll switch to, well, this is Bill's reference frame because he's at rest in this reference frame. Now what we're going to do is look at somebody else's reference frame. Okay, so now Bill, who we know is at rest in the Earth reference frame, he's just standing on a bridge, Bill is moving quickly to the left in this particular picture. And if you look at it again, let's see if we can run this back again. No, we can't. Okay, that's all right. Here, I'll go up and then put it down again. There we go. We can run it again. You'll see the red one is staying completely stationary. The blue one is drifting a little bit to the left. So whoever is stationary, that's the reference frame you're in. So this is actually Anne's frame of reference. Anne is stationary in this particular frame. So to get to this frame from Bill's reference frame, we just subtract off from everything in the picture Anne's velocity with respect to Bill. So we've got one arrow to the right attached to Anne. That's Anne's velocity with respect to Bill. And then we subtract off Anne's velocity with respect to Bill from everything. So those, all those vectors going left on every little dot here represent the subtraction of Anne's velocity with respect to Bill. Okay. So when you do that for Anne, you get to zero. When you do it for Bill, you started with zero, and then you subtract off Anne's velocity with respect to Bill. That's like adding 120 kilometers per hour west to everybody, in fact. So in this frame of reference, Bill is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour west. This is with respect to Anne. And Cindy, at the top, is traveling 10 kilometers per hour west with respect to Anne. What we really wanted to see was, uh, what does it look like from Cindy's reference frame? So we do the same thing for Cindy's reference frame. So in Cindy's reference frame, Cindy is at rest. Now we see Bill traveling quickly to the left. He's moving uh, west with respect to uh, Cindy. And Anne is moving slowly to the east with respect to Cindy. And that's totally consistent with the math that we did. Okay, so in this case, Bill would be, tr would be traveling at 110 kilometers per hour west with respect to Cindy, because Cindy was traveling 110 kilometers east with respect to Bill. And the critical one was, what's going on with Anne? So Anne is going 10 kilometers per hour east with respect to Cindy. So if we had this video playing for an hour and everybody kept doing what they were doing, Anne would be 10 kilometers further east than Cindy would. In fact, in this reference frame, Cindy wouldn't be moving. So this, again, is Cindy's reference frame. Okay. So that's how you cope with things in one dimension. So we'll do another example, a uh, very similar example. We'll just change one piece. And this is the piece we're changing. Okay, so everything else is the same, except now Cindy, with respect to Bill, is going 110 kilometers per hour west, not east. Everything else is the same. Okay, so here is Bill's reference frame. So now again, he's on a bridge looking down on the mass pike, and he sees Cindy traveling west, and he sees uh, Anne traveling east. Okay? And again, we want to know what the velocity of Anne is with respect to Cindy. Now, if so, sort of put yourself in Cindy's car. If you're in Cindy's car, you see Bill flying back behind you at high speed. In fact, he would have to be going at 110 kilometers per hour east with respect to you if you were Cindy. And if you look across at the opposite lane, the opposite uh, side of the road, you see cars really flying past you in the other direction. Okay, And so we're going to get a pretty big number for the velocity van with respect to Cindy. Okay, So ultimately we want to end up in Cindy's reference frame, but we're going to go through everything. We're going to go to Anne's reference frame first and then to Cindy's reference frame. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it for a completeness here. Okay, so to get to Cindy's ref uh, sorry, Anne's reference frame, we're going to subtract off Anne's velocity with respect to Bill from everybody, including Anne herself. Okay? So, oh, and here's the math, actually, we're going to get to. So we'll do the math. We'll apply the general equation at the bottom. Velocity of Anne with respect to Cindy, that's what we're looking for, is the velocity of Anne with respect to Bill. That was given, 120 kilometers per hour east. And in our equation, we have plus velocity of Bill with respect to Cindy. Now, what was given above is velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill. 
So if that's 110 kilometers per hour west, and if you flip the order of the subscripts to get velocity of bill with respect to Cindy, you just change the direction of the vector. You absolutely take the opposite of the vector. So instead of being 110 kilometers per hour west, it's the VBC vector, velocity of bill with respect to Cindy, is 110 kilometers per hour east. And so now you add 120 to 110, and they're both going east. So we get 230 kilometers per hour east. So Cindy is going to be whipping by Ann. And sorry, and this is actually Ann with respect to Cindy. So they, they're both whipping by one another, but we're looking for Ann with respect to Cindy. Okay, so let's look at uh, the Ann reference frame. So here Ann is at rest. We really see Cindy going zooming by in a uh, westerly direction. And Bill is also going at high speed here. So Bill, according to Ann, is going at 120 kilometers per hour west. And Cindy is going to be traveling at 230 kilometers per hour west, according to Cindy. According to, sorry, according to Ann. This is the Ann reference frame. Okay, now we'll switch everything over to the Cindy reference frame. So starting with the Bill picture, we subtract off all the, the velocity of Cindy with respect to Bill from everybody. And of course, when we do that for Cindy herself, she ends up at rest. Bill ends up in motion, 110 kilometers per hour um, east. He's traveling with respect to Cindy. And there is this high speed that Ann's going. 100, sorry, 120 plus 110 is 230 kilometers per hour east with respect to Cindy. Okay, this is totally consistent with your experience of traveling on a uh, highway. Okay, you see something that's actually at rest in the frame of reference in the Earth, but you're going down at high speed, and it looks like it's coming toward you at high speed, and the car on the opposite lane going the other direction is really going zooming fast past you. Okay, so that's everything. That's Cindy's reference frame. That's everything uh, for relative velocity in one dimension. Fairly easy to do vector addition because just pluses and minuses, really. Okay, so how does it work in two dimensions? Okay, so in general, we still get the same equation. We could apply this in three dimensions if we wanted to, but we'll just go to two. So it still works, this lovely equation, and it's just now a little more challenging to do the vector addition. So we have vectors in two dimensions, so we might have to break things up into components, for instance. So here's an example here. We have a truck traveling at 40 kilometers per hour west. We have a car traveling at 30 kilometers per hour in this particular direction, which is 40 degrees south of east. So we've got to figure out what that means. Okay, so this car is not going due east. It's displaced, the vector is shifted from due east by 40 degrees in the southerly direction. Okay. So if you did a vector, you'd have a 40 degree angle between the velocity of this car and east. Okay. And ultimately we want, to, we want to know is what is the velocity of the car relative to the truck. So let's kind of look at, once again, the, uh, the Bill reference frame. We'll start with that. And here's our equation. Okay, now we have C representing car, T for truck, and G here represents the ground. Okay, the sort of stationary reference frame of the Earth. And because it's in two dimensions, we can break things up into components. That's certainly one way to do it. Another uh, equivalent way to do it is to apply the sine law and the cosine law. Okay, so you've got two different ways to do it. Either one should get you the answer. Okay, so here we have kind of the ground reference frame. This is kind of like the bill reference frame in the previous example. Okay, so with the in this reference frame, we have the ground itself is staying stationary with respect to the ground. And the truck is traveling, that's the blue one, is traveling uh, due west. So here we have north up, east to the right, west is left, and south is down in this particular picture. And so this red car here is at an angle, and the angle between a line going to the right and this velocity vector of the red car, that's the 40 degrees we have, 40 degrees south of east. You can see it's not quite 45. Okay. And so we want to know the velocity of the car with respect to the truck. So it's better to go to the truck's reference frame to do this. 
Okay, but we'll go through everything and look at, for instance, what things look like from the car's point of view. So if you're driving the car, this is what things look like to you. You know, a tree that's stationary in the ground is going up and to the left with respect to you. It's got a northerly and a westerly component to its motion as you're driving the car. And the truck has got, you can see the, the uh, vector addition, two-dimensional vector addition problem we have here. Okay, with the, with the truck. We'll look at that for the car. So this is the car's reference frame. But we want to know the velocity of the car with respect to the truck, so we really want to be in the truck's reference frame. So how do we get there? Well, if we start with the ground reference frame where we started before, we just subtract off the velocity of the truck with respect to the ground from everybody, and that will mean the truck's net velocity is zero. A tree or something that's stationary on the earth is now moving in a easterly direction with respect to the truck. Okay, it started off with no velocity, but now we've subtracted off the truck's velocity, which is like adding 40 kilometers per hour east to everything is really what we've done. And then the car is the interesting one, okay? So the one that uh, is attached to the car but then goes sharply down, that's the velocity of the car with respect to the ground. Then this one which is only going to the right, that's the negative of the truck's velocity with respect to the ground, so that's the 40 kilometers per hour east vector. And then the longest angle, the longest side of that triangle is really what we're after. That's the velocity of the car with respect to the truck. So we're looking for the uh, magnitude and direction of that longest vector in that triangle down there. Okay. So here we go through the vector addition process. Okay. So what we have is our lovely equation. Velocity of the car with respect to the truck is the velocity of the car with respect to the ground plus the velocity of the ground with respect to the truck. Velocity of the truck with respect to the ground is what was given, 40 kilometers per hour west. In our equation, we have the opposite. So we reverse the direction of that vector when we reverse the subscripts. Here's the given car's velocity. So we're just looking for VCT. Okay, so here's our, this is our VCG uh, vector, that one. Then we have velocity of the ground with respect to the truck. That's the one we're looking for. How big is that and what direction is it in? This is the 40 degree angle between the horizontal and the 30 kilometer per hour vector. That makes that one 40 over there. If that one's 40, that's 140 degrees. So now with two sides and an angle, you can apply the cosine law to get the size of the other side if you want, or you can do components, okay? So either do components of the two known vectors to get the unknown, or you can use cosine law first to get that other side and then sine law to get one other angle and to work out the answer for how, what this vector is, how big it is, what direction it's in. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you guys. But if you want to know what the answer is, here it is. So the answer ultimately is the velocity of the car with respect to the truck is 65.9 kilometers per hour at an angle of only 17 degrees south of east. Okay, so we'll do some more on relative velocity in class. So that's all for today.